Hello, this is Columbia Mayor Steve Benjamin. On behalf of our great city, I'm excited to announce the availability of our Resilient Columbia CARES Act loan program for small businesses located within the city limits of Columbia that have been impacted by the pandemic. As our city recovers from the unprecedented challenges caused by this national crisis, we understand that our small businesses are struggling on multiple fronts, some more than others. We're also aware of the strength and resiliency of our small businesses and the vital role that they play in creating a strong, diverse, yet inclusive economy. The purpose of these funds is to give every business in our city an opportunity to survive during this pandemic. We hope this funding will assist your company in overcoming the economic injury attributed to the coronavirus. With that being said, the City of Columbia has streamlined our loan application and added even more flexibility to the lending process. Any business within the City of Columbia may apply for these funds, especially those businesses that may have had difficulty obtaining financing in the past. Our success as a city is dependent on the success of our small business community. We're confident that by working together, our local community will prevail during these challenging times. We are resilient Columbia, and we will recover together. Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Melissa Lindler. I'm the director for the Office of Business Opportunities with the City of Columbia. We're so happy to have all of you with us this morning. Um, can't say enough about the importance of the relationships that we have with our business partners throughout the city and all that you do to keep our economy strong and going. Um, the Resilient Columbia CARES Act loan fund application actually will open today um, at it's on our website as we speak. And we're gonna go through some different um, set sections of that application and make sure that you understand the purpose and intent behind the funding as well. I'm getting some feedback. Can everyone mute your, mute your phones unless you're actually speaking? Thank you. Um, I, I wanna take a moment just to thank our partners, our community partners that are gonna help us through this process. We know that the need for immediate assistance because of the coronavirus is great right now within our city. And we wanna make sure that we're not only providing the resources that you need to take advantage of all opportunities that are out there, but also that we're in being inclusive and in making sure our partners are at the table to help you through that process. A number of great resources that are in the city of Columbia that a lot of people are not familiar with the the minority business development agency um, is working directly with us as well as the benedict college women's business center the south carolina small business development center and the south carolina community loan fund as resource partners but not only that as your partner to help you through this process and to make sure that your loan application packages are complete and that you're learning something about your business and the business infrastructure um, of, of a successful business model through this process. So you can hear, hear a great number of uh, a great amount of information today from our speakers. Um, I wanna also make sure that you know that we have great resources here all year, every day at the City of Columbia, specifically for, made for our small business community. Okay, I hear some backup, so I'm not sure about the delay. But one of the, the main mission and purpose of the Office of Business Opportunities is to provide support and services through technical assistance training that support the growth and development of our small business community. There are three different areas that we have within our office. We go by OBO, Office of Business Opportunity. The first one is commercial lending, and that's why most of you are here today to hear about the financial assistance that we have available for startups or existing businesses that are trying to grow or expand um, within our city, but also the important role that you play uh, in creating jobs in um, some of our more uh, needed areas. We also have a contractor and supply diversity initiative through the city. 
Um, and again, this is something that we are very proud of. Uh, this is one way that we can make sure that we are not only diversifying our procurement process, but we're also making sure that our community, our business community is a part of what we do at the city on a daily basis. So many of you that are joining us today are part, or they participate in that program through our subcontractor outreach program, our mentor protege program, our LBE, our local business enterprise program, and our Columbia Disadvantaged Business Business Enterprise Program. So those are just a few programs that we have in place to help make sure that we are bridging the gap that it may exist between our minority business suppliers that we have in the city and um, making sure that they have opportunities through uh, contracts and other procurement um, with procurement opportunities at the city of Columbia. So, and, and I also wanna mention just another something that we don't talk about a lot, but it is also, uh, it's been a priority of our city council and our city manager and, and, and our mayor to make sure that on a daily basis, when it comes to ordering supplies or materials, our departments are utilizing our minority businesses as well. So we have a 15% citywide goal across the entire city where we're encouraging our departments to make sure that when it comes to working with and, and buying supplies, materials, services, that you are utilizing our minority vendors that are locally here in, in the city of Columbia. Something else that we do also, the third and final um, aspect of our office is our technical assistance, education and advocacy. And this is an example of that today. We provide a number of workshops, not only hosted by OBO, but also hosted through or with in collaboration with our business um, partners, our community partners. And so you'll see a lot more videos, training opportunities, um, uh, technical assistance opportunities, counseling, one-on-one -on -one trainings that we're going to be doing as a result of this opportunity here, the Resilient Columbia uh, CARES Act funding, but also it's what we do every day. Um, we can't do what we do own, and we realize that, and especially during this, this time in our nation's uh, uh, history, uh, we are all experiencing um, limits. Um, we're all learning to how, how to operate in this new normal and we know that we cannot do it by ourselves but we're greater together and that's another reason for our partnerships with our different partners that you're going to meet today. Next slide. Thank you. Um, the purpose and intent of the Re Resilient Columbia Cares Act Long Fund, it actually, the we were actually solicited by the Economic Development Administration, part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, to actually submit this application because of our ability to provide funding um, to our community and because of our past history of being e effective and efficient at administering federal dollars um, when it comes to helping our small business community. So the purpose of these funds is to provide financing options to our small businesses in an effort to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the economic injury attributed to the coronavirus, coronavirus COVID-19. Um, these funds are the second federal funds that we received from the EDA um, within the last 20 years. So our last, the last time that we actually received EDA funding was 20 years ago. So these are brand new funds in the amount of 2.9 million, 2.7 of which will be lent out directly to our small business community. One important aspect of this, in order to apply for these funds, you must be located within the corporate limits of the City of Columbia. And, and you have had to have demonstrated that you've been impacted by the coronavirus. If you are uncertain about where your business is actually located, if you're on the line, you're just not sure, you may have an address that says the City of Columbia, but you actually have to input your address into our GIS database, our website page, and that link will be in the presentation that we're going to send us out to you later, but it's also going to be in the loan documents that we're going to share with you shortly um, in the chat room. You can enter your address and it will tell you exactly where you're located and if you're actually within the corporate limits of the City of Columbia. And that's very important. Next slide.
So under this RLF, um, our loan ranges will be from $10,000 to $200,000. Um, and we're going to go into some more specifics shortly. Um, Mr. Brett Whiting will share that information with you. And a very important aspect of these funds, and it's something that we've done because of the flexibility allowed by EDA in the federal regulations. We are providing um, these loans at a 0% interest rate for the first year. And after that, it will be at a fixed rate of 2.5% for the remaining long term. So that's great. And there's no early pe penalty if you want to pay this off within the first year, which means that you <laughs> would pretty much have, you know, received this money at no interest. Um, but we encourage you to do that. If someone may be in need of immediate financing, just to get some things off the ground or get moving, or you have other funds that may be coming in, and this can help fill that gap in the meantime, this is a perfect opportunity for you to actually access some funds and be able to do that and pay it back if you would like, but there and you're not required. The loan terms will depend on the amount of money that you take out, which mean uh, how long it's gonna last or how long your payment period will be will actually depend on how long, I mean, I'm sorry, how much money you've actually um, financed. Okay, next slide. And Melissa, I believe Carla put that GIS, GIS link in the chat if anyone wants to check their business location to see if they're within the city. Right. Have we, um, I also wanted everyone to have the loan documents. Have we done that also? We'll post that as well in the chat. Thank you. So I'm going to turn this over now to our loan officer, Mr. Brett Whiting. Um, he's going to walk you through the uses of the loan funds and application process. And I just want to also acknowledge Aisha Driggers, who you'll hear her voice throughout this presentation. Um, also, Carla Eichelberger, she's in our office as well. Uh, Brett Whiting, I just mentioned, he's our loan officer. We also have Tanya porter Deberry, who does a lot of behind the scenes uh, for the OBO office. Many of you who have worked with us because of our desire to work with our local businesses, you have communicated a lot with her when it comes to your payments and when you get your payments. So she's someone to know if you have not spoken with her. Great, great person. And she's been with the, the city now for a very long time, almost 20 years. Uh, we also have Kalina Ginyard. She actually monitors our supplier diversity piece within the Office of Business Opportunities. Latanya Germany is with us, as well as Juliette Nelly. She's with us, and that, those are our compliance uh, staff members. Thank you. Brad, it's all yours. Brett, you're on mute. I'm sorry, I'll start that over. I'm Brett Whiting. I'm the loan officer with the Office of Business Opportunities. Uh, I will be discussing, as uh, Melissa alluded to, I will be going over uh, the acceptable uses of our loan funds the ineligible uses of our loan funds, uh, followed by our, I'll cover the loan application, uh, the expediated uh, slash cover uh, sheet uh, with our loan documentation checklist. And lastly, I will speak to you guys about the loan process. Uh, so, with the usage of loan funds, uh, they can be used for development of crisis management plans, the COVID-19 testing for employees, employee safety training to prevent the spread of COVID-19, uh, needed modifications to business operations and facilities to accommodate social distancing, purchasing of personal protective equipment, cleaning supplies and materials or services, inventory per 
purchases, technology, um, signage, along with more traditional um, usage, uh, we utilize our loan funds for financing, building construction, conversions, expansions, acquisitions of land, buildings, mach machinery, equipment, supplies, and materials, or in particular cases of supply working capital. In addition uh, to those things, um, many other usage usages will be considered. Uh, so don't feel that if it wasn't mentioned during this um, presentation that it won't be a um, considered item. Uh, the ineligible activities uh, can, uh, commercial revolving loan funds cannot be used for activities listed below. Uh, city staff may reject applications for ineligible activities. These uh, activities may include, but are not limited to the following. Direct or indirect re refinancing of any pre-existing debt or subsidizing interest payments on an existing loan. Payment distribution or as loan to owners, partners, shareholders of the applicant's business, except as, a, a ordinate, as ordinary compensation for services rendered. Acquisition uh, of an equity position in a private business uh, cannot be used for loan guarantees a promise by one party to assume the debt obligation of a borrower if the borrower defaults on a loan. Uh, also, uh, finance, finance the acquisition, construction, improvement, or operation of real property, which is to be held for speculative real estate ventures. Finance the creation uh, dissemination or distribution of materials deemed patently repugnant by commonly recognized community standards of decency or which has the effect of denying anyone their constitu constitutionally guaranteed rights. Other activities prohibited by the U.S. Department of Commerce, Economic Development Administration, the funding source of the Resilient Columbia Cares Act. Uh, the next section I'd like hey, to... Hey, Brett, can I say something? Sure. This is Alan. Sure. Um, for those of you who are business owners, um, um, basically what Brett just went over is, is he showed you what you can and cannot um, up use the funds for. Um, if you know um, what you're planning on using the funds for just to give um, the city and um, those that are going to be working with them an idea of what to expect, Will you mind putting that in an idea of this uh, issue with these applications? So if you know, if you're looking at, you know, acquisition, if you're looking at working capital, if you're looking at purchasing equipment, you know, just put that in the chat box and that'll give us some idea of what to expect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just so you guys know, that was one of our partners, uh, Alan Brown, he's with our Small Business Development Center, someone that uh, we rely on heavily for, for advice. Um, I'd now like to go over uh, the application. Uh, the application components, there are actually six components of our application. The first section is ownership information. The next uh, section is principal officer and managers of the business uh, sources, the total pro project cost, um, what you're looking at, uh, constru construction projects section only, only use that section if construction is part of the uh, intent uh, and your overall estimate uh, estimated cost. Uh, and lastly, we have upgraded our application process. And um, for those of you that have the capability, 
the actual application document can be um, electronically signed. Um, hi, Brett, this is Melissa. Can, do you mind going over um, the sources of total project costs and what we're asking for? Um, in that section of the application. And as Brett mentioned, we have this application in line. It is a PDF fillable form. Um, you may also be able to sign it as well. Well, you will be able to sign it as well electronically, or you can print it out and sign it. We wanted to make sure that, that this application process was as user-friendly user as possible. Um, so if there's some um, technical issues that you are having, please let us know, and we'll certainly walk you through the process or get you a hard copy of the application directly. But um, Brett, if you can please just go over a little bit the sources of total project costs and what we're sure. requesting in that section. Okay. Um, the total the pro total project cost, the first line of that, that section asks for um, the overall cost of whatever you're trying to do. Um, so that's the total cost, everything that it's gonna cost. Uh, the next line is owner funds. Those are the dollars um, that the business owner um, is injecting into that total project cost. Uh, it, in, in this case, with this program, that's not a requirement. Uh, but if, if you do intend to put in some of your own dollars, that would be listed on that second line. Uh, bank loan, uh, that would be an outside um, bank that is participating in your overall project. As Melissa alluded to earlier, uh, our, our limit on our loan funds is $200,000. So in a situation where you have a project that's $350,000, uh, of course, we can only max out at, at $200,000. Uh, so if there was another bank that was part of this uh, project uh, and they were infusing another $150,000 to cover the, the total cost, that would be listed on that line. The city loan amount would be the amount that we are infusing. That would be the 200,000 I just uh, uh, discussed in that, that scenario. Uh, the purpose of the loan, that's where you spell out what you're gonna be using the money for, what the purpose of the loan is. Uh, the target date of the loan, that basically when you plan on utilizing the, the funds that were issued. Uh, Representatives, name, address, and phone number, that would be your, your bank information, your primary bank information. Uh, we're asking for the contact person of whoever you use as your, as your primary bank. Uh, an attorney, uh, list an attorney if you have one for your business. Um, the accountant that you use for your business. Um, please note on the section just below, uh, this section where it says uh, construction projects only, only use that section if you're doing uh, brand new build up construction. We, we don't need that section if you're an, an existing business uh, and you're using the funds uh, to uh, upgrade your current pro property. Uh, that wouldn't apply in that section. Um, on the next page, there is a listing of most commonly used um, project cost. And the first one on that line is land acquisition. So if you're buying a property, that would go in there. That next line, uh, new building construction, that's if you had uh, filled out the section that I just discussed before that, um, that would go in that line. 
land and building acquisition, that would be the total of the land purchase and the building that sits on that land. Uh, acquisition of machinery. So if you're buying machinery, you would put that in that line item. Uh, equipment inventory purchase, if you're buying computers, that sort of thing, uh, that would go in that line. Working capital, that would be funds that you're using for uh, various reasons to uh, uh, enhance the business. Um, if you are acquiring another business, you are buying another business, uh, that would go in the acquisition of existing business um, and you're using those funds to to acquire the business. Uh, debt reduction. Um, only under certain scenarios would we use our funding for your debt reduction. As you heard earlier, one of the um, ineligible reasons for our lending is to uh, pay off existing debt, but uh, there are scenarios where, um, you know, it may be some, uh, a consideration. Um, space upfit, that's what I was alluding to earlier. If you have a business and you needed to enhance the business, the exterior, interior of the business, parking lot, whatever, that uh, information would go into the um, space upfit. Are there any questions about the loan application? Right. I just wanted to let everyone know I have uploaded the actual application oh, into the chat box um, for you to look through. I want to give everyone an opportunity just to click on that now. Our next um, segment, we're going to have questions. We're going to take a brief pause and answer any questions that you may have. Um, but give everyone an opportunity just to go to the chat box and open up the actual link to the application so you can look at it. In the meantime, I'm also going to go ahead and upload the business narrative template that you're going to uh, hear about next, as well as other components of the application. Melissa, you want me to go ahead over the um, and go over the business narrative now? You're on mute. Yeah, that that was the next. Thank you. I wanted to okay. I wanted to pause. I think that we have uh, the question section questions. next. Correct me. Yes. Yeah, for yes. questions. Yeah. Um, Aisha, can you start reading the questions for us while I upload the documents? Okay, the question is asked about the application and seeing the application. Um, now, one person said, let's see, I think Alan asked the question earlier um, for people to say what type of um, assistance they would need. Um, so working capital is listed, equipment, um, improvements to existing office building equipment and working capital. Um, PPE technology is also listed um, as a need. Um, does one of the questions asked, does working capital include leases? What, um, I would ask to clarify what you mean by leases. Right. Are you, are you, did, are, you made lease payments? Payments. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, these funds may be used for operating. These funds may be used for operating expenses related to operating your business on a daily basis, which would entail lease payments, payments to your employees, um, utilities, anything of that nature that will help you, or even financing of, of equipment, or purchasing equipment. 
um, those that those are acceptable uses of these funds. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, someone asked, I want to purchase land and build offices for two of my businesses. What's that? I'm sorry. What? I want to purchase land and build offices for two of my businesses. Would that be eligible? The short answer would be yes, as long as the purchase uh, and the buildings are not going to be used for speculative uh, purposes. So if you're buying land and making building something on that land and it's your business, it is an eligible um, uh, request. Um, if you are, this is an ineligible, if you're buying the land and you're building something on it to flip it, that would be something that wouldn't be um, allowed. But the short answer is if you are just building a buying a building, building a uh, building on it for the purpose of your um, business to be located there, yes. Right. I mean, these are not um, real estate investment funds, right? These funds can't be used for real estate investments. They're, they're intended to help you um, weather uh, the challenges that your business have, have been experienced as a result of COVID-19 and coronavirus. Um, and so, you know, there there's some limitations um, on how the funds can be used because the city has to um, answer to EDA about how they have used the funds. Um, but even in that, based on what Brett has presented, um, there's a large latitude um, that they've created on what they will allow the funds to be used for. And um, if Brett went over something and it, it didn't seem like your, your question or your project um, or your need for your business was answered in that, you know, reach out to Brett um, on a case by case basis. Right. And um, based on his knowledge, uh, his team's knowledge of the guidelines, um, they'll see where you can fit in. You know, um, Brett, um, I, I'm gonna go ahead, you know, um, since I'm already talking, <laughs> Melissa yeah. and her team, Melissa and her team made a uh, specific um, intentional effort um, to make sure that they were um, including as many business owners and business types um, within the guidelines of the EDA um, to have access to these funds as they pretend, as they could. Um, Brett and I, you know, um, pulled the hair that we had out, you know, trying to figure out how to make um, um, guidelines um, that were defensible um, to be able to keep these funds in play um, for you all who are on the call. And so, you know, um, please, no. if, if please reach out to them. Um, I, I just want to go over one more thing about the city limits. There was a question. I'm going to, I've been posting PDF documents, but apparently you all cannot get them. You cannot see them. So I'm going to send the links. I just posted the link for the actual application itself. So make sure everyone can access that. Um, I'm about to send another link with the other documents so you can actually see those as well. There was another question here in here about the clarification regarding whether or not you're within the city limits. So you have to be, your business has to be physically located within the city, corporate city limits of the city of Columbia. And in order for you to determine, it's not just based by zip codes because of zip codes that have, that are both within the city limits and we have zip codes, the same zip code that may not be within the city limits. So you actually have to enter your address into um, our G GIS uh, website database. And there, when you, once you enter that address, it will come back to as whether you're in the city or not and who your rep is if you are within the city, what district you're in. So I'm gonna send that link as well. Um, one question I see from Mr. Mary Grant, if I'm outside the city limits, does that make me totally ineligible for this loan? It does, unfortunately. Um, you must be within the city limits to actually qualify um, for this funding. Um, let me see again for clarity you must be 
within the city limits. Your business must be physically address, address physically within the city limits in, in order for you to uh, purchase these funds. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, in order for you to utilize these funds. I want to purchase and improve existing property for rental. Perfectly fine. That That is an approved uh, expenditure for these funds. Um, I just want to go through, make sure everyone's questions are answered before we move on. Everything that we're talking about today, these applications are on our website. I'm going to actually put that link on here. Carla actually, uh, at 1114, she actually put in the chat box the actual GIS uh, website that we're referencing in order for you to utilize to figure out whether or not your business is physically located within the city uh, limits or not. If there are no more questions, you see. So there's one about at 1137, Melissa, I'm a sole proprietor uh -huh. in within a salon and I'm now wanting to open mm -hmm. a gas salon. Will I be able to construct this type of business within the city limits? They're currently- yes. um, If it's within the city limits, yes. Um, you, you, apparently she's in the county or he's in the county, Marquetta. You're in the county, which is fine, but you definitely need to make sure where you're planning to locate that business, that it's within the city limits if you're plan, planning on applying for these funds um, to help you do that. Let's see. Can you apply for separate loans for separate businesses? Um, Short answer is yes. However, not for not for the same pot of money. If you are an existing revolving loan fund applicant or a recipient, and you're in good standing with your loan payments, you may apply for another loan under this program. So, if you're currently uh, paying back a, a loan to the City of Columbia that you received previously, and it's under a different program you are eligible to apply for funds under this new program. You are not eligible to apply for two separate loans under the same pot of money. We're trying to make sure that the funds are available to as many businesses as possible. Um, and in, in many cases, if you request a, the largest amount, that doesn't mean that we're gonna be able to fund it at that amount, even though we're saying that um, loans can be made up to $200,000 um, we are really, really trying to stretch this money out um, to serve as many businesses as possible. Not to say that we won't provide the 200000 but what we are saying is that we're trying to make sure that as many people have access to these dollars as possible. Although banks are not required, bank participation is not required, um, in many instances where you, your project or what your, the, the money the request is made for, if it exceeds 200,000, um, either you will have to, you know, come up with that difference out of your personal funding, or you will have to uh, get additional assistance from a traditional or non-traditional financial institution, a bank, um, in order to, to do so. Right. And, um, and Melissa, example of that project, uh, um, an example is the, the um, attendee that put the project in that they're looking to acquire land and um, build two businesses, uh, two buildings on that land. That's probably larger than two hundred thousand dollars. You know, so a project like that would would probably require some participation. So that's the type of project where she's making a reference to where um, it's just going to require more than the funds right. available um, that the city has. And so you need to so keep that in mind. Exactly. Thank you, Alan. If you're trying to purchase, like you said, a property or a building and the building cost is $250,000, um, we would only be able to actually finance up to $200,000 of that purchase. And you would have to seek other sources to cover the, the, the difference. Another great question on our credit score. I think we mentioned that and we're gonna actually get into that uh, in another part of the, the, the presentation. Credit score, we have weighed the 600 credit score requirement for this program. 
However, we're because of COVID and because we know that a lot of people, businesses, financial positioning has changed over the last couple of months. We're going to be looking at credit scores, but we're, we're looking at it on a case by case basis and we're looking at it from a historical basis. Um, so the 600 credit score is not a requirement as it has been for other funding provided through the city of Columbia. Uh, another great question, Teresa Joyner, can the funds be utilized for startups that were in the process of starting the business but got put placed on hold due to COVID? Excellent, excellent question. And the answer is yes. Um, the funds may be used for startups. We have a number of business owners that are having to pivot, maybe changing or, you know, adjusting their business model. Maybe they're changing altogether um, and starting brand new uh, businesses uh, because of COVID. So, of course, uh, these funds may be used for startups um, and they may also be used as you pivot your business to change your business model and your business product or services. So that, that's a great question. Um, if I purchase a business via owner financing, and I have, and I still have a balance. Would I be able to use the funds as acquiring the rest of the business, or would that be considered loan repayment and not eligible? I'm, I'm thinking that that would probably would be if you have an agreement in place, and it's a financial agreement um, where you've already uh, agreed to pay a certain amount. Um, we will have to look at that on a case by case basis. Jonathan, I would encourage you to contact Brett and let him work with you directly on that. Um, his information is going to be in the PowerPoint presentation later, and he can talk you through that. Can you use funds for payroll? Yes, you may. You may use funds for pay payroll. Keep in mind, again, we're trying to help you recover, prepare for, and respond to the economic impact caused by COVID. So, we want you to be able to retain your employees. We want you to be able to bring on and employ more people. So of course, yes, these funds may be used for payroll. Uh, you may have answered, but if I if we apply for say 100,000, will you either approve or deny the full amount or approve a lower amount? It just depends on, um, again, Brett went through the, the layout or the cost breakdown of how you're planning on using the funds. Um, if if the 100000 that you're requesting are eligible expenses and are eligible uses of the funds, more than likely we will approve you. Um, if there's something in there that it, more than likely, let me correct that, more than likely we will recommend you for approval. Um, the OBO office, we actually make the re recommendations for approval to our commercial revolving loan fund committee. And it's a committee of community members, business community members, um, lawyers, uh, different sectors uh, that compose of that community. And we make that recommendation to them. So depending on what those, the breakdown of the cost that you're requesting the funds for, if there's an item in there that's not considered eligible or if the committee does not want to approve that because of it's not eligible, then um, we would probably more than likely take that out of the request before we present it to the committee. Um, so that wouldn't even be a factor. We will let you know that beforehand. Um, did I cover everything, Every all the questions? The I last think I did. Question, someone mm -hmm. asked about if it would be recorded, and we are, our um, City of Columbia um, Public Relations Department is live streaming this on our city YouTube. So we will uh, provide that to everyone attending. If you register with Eventbrite, I automatically have your email. If you don't, um, if you did not, I will put our OBO email so you can send me your email address and that way we can send you a copy of the presentation, a survey, and then also the link to view this at a later date. One of the Thank things, you. One of the things I'd like to interject, if you guys will, we're going to go or there will be presented various scenarios uh, that we won't be able to cover every possible um, scenario today, but we encourage you to present uh, those scenarios uh, to us so that we can discuss, you know, whether they fall within the parameters, uh, or not, this is something that we might be able to refer you to one of our partners uh, to address. Um, so. We, basically, what I'm saying is we encourage you to present um, 
any scenario that you think might fall under our um, our uh, program objectives. And um, I also want just to take a moment just to thank uh, Columbia PR. They are um, instrumental in making sure that all of our community, our entire community, our business community is always engaged and they have access to the great resources provided through the city. So I, I definitely want to take a moment to acknowledge them. And we will now hear from Mr. Alan Brown. Um, he is the Midlands Coordinator and Business Consultant for the Columbia Area Small Business Development Center. And as he mentioned, um, we actually reached out to him. Um, we reached out to our the small, South Carolina Small Business, uh, I'm sorry, South, South Carolina Community Business um, Fund, Small Business Fund, also to Mr. James Chapman to help us put these, this application together and to make sure that we made it as accessible um, and as easy to read and streamline as possible so that everyone will have access to to completing and competing for this fund, these, fund, these funds. So, Alan, turn it over to you. Thank you, Melissa. So, um, I just want to reiterate you know, um, a key point um, in, re in reference to these funds that, you know, um, that under the RLF, um, business owners may apply for a loan range from ten thousand dollars up to i want to i want to say that again up to two hundred thousand dollars so that won't that's not necessarily that you'll get the full amount but it means you can apply for that amount and um, their loan committee will, will make adjustments as they as they deem fit uh, but the key point is you know pay attention to what i'm about to say um, come close to the screen all right pay attention to what i'm about to say these loans will be 0% interest for the first year of repayment. This is the key part, because that's only 12 months. And then 2.5% fixed. I want to say that again. 2.5% fixed for the remaining loan term. Right? If, if y'all not clapping, y'all should be clapping. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's that's. Right, that's that's as close, um, and I'm gonna say this word because people call me all the time asking for this. That's as close to a grant that you're gonna get in this environment. So let me say that again. That's as close to a grant that you're gonna get. Two point five percent fixed. Right. So don't call the city saying, you know, I heard y'all got a grant. No, it's not a grant. It's a loan at two point five percent fixed for the term. Right, that is huge, particularly if you're looking to acquire real estate um, or some fixed property or build a building. You know, two point cent, two point five percent at a 10, 15 year term. That's that's awesome, right? So, you know, I, I just want to reiterate that. So, one of the things that we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about um, the business narrative. And Aisha, if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask if you could while I talk about this to act, to bring up the actual. Um, form. Now, um, when, when we devise this um, business narrative, you know, we intentionally did not want to make it long and complicated. Um, we, we wanted to make it something that you could basically um, turn around um, in a day to a week, as, a, as opposed to spending, you know, three weeks, four weeks trying to come up with the information. Um, that you need to come put that you need to put in this um, particular document. Can you do it um, full page size, um, Aisha? You know, go to the the PDF and just do full page so they can see full page in the. And I'm and I'm gonna talk through those components. The other one next to the left of it, right there. Thank you. Right. So, um, so I'm not gonna read all the different components of the plan because. Um, the narrative because you have it attached, you know, it was posted into the chat. Uh, you can download it and follow along with me on your own screen from that particular pe perspective, right? But, you know, um, but starting out, we have a company overview, right? So this is a very simple company overview of your business, right? You know, um, we want to find out um, what inspired you to start your business and what are your business objectives, 
right? Um, it's important that you have a goal or objective for your business. And we want to understand that because that will help us understand why you went into business and the purpose of the business, right? Um, and then we also want to know um, in relationship to COVID-19 and, and a revolving loan fund, you know, what are you going to use the funds for, right? And, and I like, you know, how OBO had said, had said you know, um, how will the RLF funding assist you in preventing, preparing for, and responding to? Remember those words. Preventing, preparing for, and responding to the economic injury attributed to the coronavirus. Preventing, right? Um, meaning preventing your business from um, going out of business, right? You know, preparing you for sustainability, right? Responding to any issues. Um, that's related to your business, any contract changes that might occur as related to um, COVID-19 that's causing you to have to expend additional capital. Those are the types of things that we want to know about, right? Because it helps us to understand um, what it is that you're really going through and how you're going to use those funds, right? Go um, go to the next page for me, Aisha. Right, and so um, in relationship to your business, we also want to know what are you doing? like. Why are you in business? You know, who are you serving? What what problem are you resolving, right? And and are you taking advantage of the opportunity through your solutions, through your services, right? And so oftentimes you hear it say, what pain is your market having, right? What what reasons are they coming to you saying, I need some help with, you know, I'm looking for somebody to do this. Um, we want to know what that is. And, and that's what we're asking. Um, in this next section, it says, you know, well, what current unmet need does your idea of venture address? You know, what is your unique opportunity, right? And so we want you to share with us that information there, right? And then we want you to tell us about your product or your service, right? We want you to tell us about your solution, right? This is the thing that most business owners want to talk about the most. They come into the office and they say, Alan, I got an idea. And I'm like, well, who are you serving? I don't know yet, but I got this idea and I think it'll work. Well, let's find somebody that needs your great idea so we can make it work. And, and, and that's why we're going through this process, right? Because one of the things that the city has decided to do is that as you're going through the process of applying for these funds, if um, there's an additional need um, for marketing support, for financial support, for bookkeeping support, for um, additional services that would help you sustain your business through this pandemic. Uh, the city is making um, allocation to be able to bring those resources to you, right? And so here's, that's what some of the things we wanna know. Um, you know, I, I like what it says in there, you know, if you have a secret sauce, right? We know um, uh, Mac McDonald's has that secret sauce, right? Um, Coca-Cola, got that secret process, right? That secret ingredient that makes you better than everyone that makes your service or your product better than your competitor. You know, uh, we want you to share that with us, but if it's, you know, but if it's intellectual property, don't put it in the document. Say I have a special um, secret sauce that I've applied for um, IP protection for, right? And if you need some assistance with intellectual um, protection, Right. Um, those are some additional resources that, you know, we can bring to bear to help you um, tech, protect your secret sauce. Right. And then we get down to the marketing components of it. Right. You know, the marketing and sales. Right. And so we talked about who your customer segments are in relationship to what problem exists. But now we want to dig a little bit deeper and have you to help us understand how to pick your customer service um, are your customers out of the marketplace, right? We, we on, want to understand who your customers are to the point where we can um, pick them out of a crowd in the marketplace. And that's what customer segments is going to do. It's going to, you know, help us identify who's going to pay attention to your problem, to your solution, to your secret sauce. Okay. So um, um, go down. If you go to the next slide, right. You know, um, and I'm going to say one more thing about customer segments, but, you know, if you're a B2B business, we want you to communicate to that, right? Our, our customers are, are other businesses. If you are a mass market um, business, we want Hello? you to say, we want you to say, Hello? Hello? 
Melissa. Send me the link. I don't have to. Thank you. <laughs> Melissa is so important. She getting calls during the presentation. Man, I want to go up and be that important. <laughs> I saw that face. I saw that face, Melissa. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Look, so then we get to um on the third page, we get to market channels, your marketing channels, right? So how are you going to reach your customers? Right? Are you going to use social media? Are you going to use search engine optimization? Are you going to use blogs? You are you gonna, you know, do networking and referrals? Are you gonna do exhibit trade shows? right affiliates public speaking whatever it is that you're going to use whatever those channels or methodologies that you're going to use to reach your customers we want you to depict that to us we want you to share that with us now um you might have noticed that some of those boxes are small and some of them are large and they are stuck that way so that means whatever you want to tell us you got to get it in those boxes and it has to make sense when we read it so that may so that means some of y'all um, might need to get somebody to help you proofread this document before you send it over to us and to make sure that it makes sense you know um i believe that you know some our writing should be easy enough for a sixth grader to understand Right, so some of y'all that know 11 year olds, you know, put it in front of an 11 year old and say, this does make sense, right? Because if it don't make sense to them, it's probably not going to make sense to us, right? And so we, I, I saw that small box and that, and that made me think about that. Now, competition, you know, I, I've had people say, man, my product's so good, my sauce so good. I don't have no competition. You know, no, nobody can do what I do yeah nobody can probably do it how you do it right but they can probably do it right i heard somebody say you know, they might have your ingredients but they can't bake your cake right so just because you have a secret sauce doesn't mean you don't have competition and then and in this section we want you to identify some of those businesses that are potential competition you know whether it's direct indirect or if you're an established business and um, and you mature, you've been in the marketplace, right? A, a, a future competitor, um, someone that, you know, so that we can identify that you understand how your competition looks and where they are. And then we're gonna ask you to take that secret sauce that you shared to us, shared with us earlier in the, in the narrative, notice I didn't say plan, in the narrative and help us to understand how are you going to use that to make that to make your business different um, than your competitors? You know, one of the tools that we use at the SBDC, I'm sure Camille um, um, uses it at MBDA, and I know Cheryl uses it at WBC, is a competitive um, matrix where we line you up against your competitors and we score you, right? And ideally, you should score higher than your competitors in the categories that you're ranking. Right. And so you can just write that down on a sheet of paper and then describe that competitive advantage here in this document. Right. And then, um, you know, so two to three attributes so of, of why you are better than or different than your competitors. Right. And so so your business and operation model. Right. And so when you think about your business, right, you think about the fulfillment component of your business. You know, um, one of my um, good friends, Cheryl Sally of the WBC, um, she talks about systems and infrastructure, right? And we don't want you to um, lay out your entire infrastructure on your entire systems or your entire processes, but we do want you to give us an insight of what systems, procedures, and processes that you are looking to implement that's going to help you run your business efficiently, right? And it's going to help you make money and keep money. Right. You know, as I said, make money and keep money. So that means at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, um, you know, as I hadn't got to the year yet, we want you to make some money. We don't want you to wait till the end of the year to show a profit. Right. And we definitely don't want you to wait till the end of the year for you to have a positive cash flow. So understanding your business um, and your operational model is extremely important. Right. And then um, I'm going to cover this last page. 
and um, this next page, and then we're going to move to the, the next page quickly, right? And so management team, basically, we want you to tell us about your experience. Um, and a key point I want you to pay attention to here that's underlined, it says include your resume bios in accordance with the checkers, right? So you don't have to tell us all of your accomplishments in this section, right? We want to tell, we want you to tell us the key components of why you are the person to run this business, right? The key components of why you are your team or the, are the people that should be running this business and include the litany, uh, litany of your accomplishments in, on your resume as an attachment based on what the checklist is requiring. Right now, as it relates to finance and accounting, right? What we want you to know and identify and share with us is we want you to share your revenue streams, right? And so if you, if you sell products, right? Um, we want you to aggregate those products, you know, into a, a couple of categories and identify that you have multiple product lines, right? Um, if you sell products um, and you have services, we want you to identify, I'm selling this product and I also have this service, right? If you're a restaurant, you know, for example, you know, um, some of your services or some of your revenues come from alcohol sales and some come from food, right? So, those are the types of things in your revenue streams that we want you to tell us, right? But we also want you to tell us, you know, if you have a subscription model, right, that provides recurring revenue. That is huge, right, because that's built-in income, right? So as it relates to cost structure, one of the key things that we want you to tell, tell us is your burn rate. You know, how fast are you using your money, right? If, if you're spending, you know, $30,000 a month, you know, then we need to know that. You know, because that speaks to the need for your working capital, right? And, and, and some of those other things are listed there, like your fixed and variable costs, your customer acquisition costs, distribution costs, et cetera, right? And then finally, on the last page, we want to know um, some of the key metrics that you are going to use to help you manage your business, right? Um, um, I, I, I had a... Um, Command Sergeant Major tell me a long time ago, right? A short pencil beats a long memory any day. And what he was saying was he wants to know, right? And you should know what are the key characteristics of your business and how they perform it, right? What, what things do you need to be aware of? Like how many units per day do you need to sell? How much cash right, do you have in the bank on a weekly basis? And how much do you need on a weekly basis? Right. You know, if, if you're having a if you're building a pro, um, a building. Right. And you have some milestones. Right. You have different phases through that process. Right. That we want to have an understanding of, of, of how those are and what those are. The, the number of leads that you need to generate a week. Those are the types of things that fit in that category. And then, you know, challenges that's self-explanatory. Right. Um, and, and that's something that only you as a business owner can explain to us the challenges um, that you're going through and um, you anticipate having to deal with in the next 12 um, to 24 months. All right, so so that's the application. You know, um, we're not expecting um, that to take you two to two weeks, right? Um, a week at max and, you know, and we have a number of resource partners on this call. Um, Camille is on this call, call. I think Tangie's on the call with the WBC. Um, myself, you know, we work together as a team to support our community to help you get the things that you need um, so that you can become a viable business. All right. Um, if there are any questions, you know, post them in the chat and uh, Aisha, just let me know if there are any questions that I have or we have regarding that and we can address them. And if there are any other questions in general, you know, I'll turn it back over to you, Melissa. Thank you, Alan. Um, Aisha, can you just go back to the beginning of the narrative for me? I just want to review the different components. I just want to go over um, the different components that he just went through. Um, and I want to encourage you to not look at this as it's being very difficult. We have deliberately, as Alan mentioned, made the process very, very simple. You can either submit a business plan or you can submit a business narrative. 
If you are submitting a bit a business narrative, you will be required to use the business narrative template that we have provided in the chat box. Again, all the doc documents that we're talking about today are available on our website and we will send out links and the documents to everyone on the call this afternoon. So you'll have them available um, at your disposal. Um, I just, again, want to just go through the different components. You do have the company overview, as Alan mentioned, um, next is the problem opportunity, and this is the single most important aspect of your narrative here, and the solution. Um, next page. Um, the marketing sales, competition. Next page. Next page. It's on there. It might be a lag, but it's... it's the, the next page, the business operational model. Yes, it's not coming up. Okay. It's not coming up. Back and yeah. Go for it. Can't. <laughs> Yeah, no. Showing them okay, screen. it's there. So finance and accounting, um, traction, key metrics, milestones, and and the last one are challenges. Um, and and when I just want to bring attention to this section right here. Keep in mind when you're responding to this section here that you talk about how COVID again. You've already mentioned it at the beginning of the narrative. Tie it back in at the end about what other significant challenges or barriers or obstacles that you're going to address um, because of COVID, and um, how this how these funds will help you again prepare for respond to cover from um, the implications of COVID. And Melissa, I see a couple of questions in the chat. Sure. Um, hola, como estas Mauricio? He, he, he asked if the application is available in multiple languages. That's yeah. about as good as I am in Spanish, man. Um, hopefully, M Melissa got somebody on her team that can translate um, the application into an, in, at least into Spanish, right? Because we have a large number of um, Hispanic Latino um, business owners in our local area that we want to make sure that we yeah. support. Uh, yes, are, and are Alan, you thank you for that. We, we are going to. Um, make sure that language uh, that we have the application and the documents in multiple languages. Um, we are working on that now. Uh, and if there's a, we will have Spanish, but if there's another version, I've asked that you send that to us if you need it in a different language, um, let us know. Um, but that is something that we're, we're certainly going to work on and make sure that it's available in multiple languages as well as our uh, other upcoming training opportunities that we'll have um, over the next couple of months. Another question, I think I've answered most of, most of the questions in the chat box. Um, when does repayment start after loan is acquired? Um, it's, it's gonna depend. It's gonna be depend on the business nature, um, what you're requesting the funds for, the, the, what stage the business is in, um, and that will be determined on an individual case by case basis. So it just depends. Um, and won't be the same for everyone. I think, is There's there a deadline for applicants? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Alan. Awesome. Um, you started to read it. It's that question, is there a deadline for the application? Um, look, Correct. I'm kind of tongue in cheek. When the money is gone, <laughs> kind of tongue in cheek. Look, <laughs> that, if the money is gone, cool. Right, ain't no, ain't, ain't, it's no more available. Well, that's true, but I will say our disbursement period for uh, these funds is we have a two year period to disperse the funds. But based on our need um, here in Columbia, we do not think that it's gonna take us two years to get this, this funding out. Um, but again, as Alan mentioned, it is pretty much 
based on when the funds have already been um, dispersed, when all funds have been dispersed. Um, keep in mind that this is one one opportunity that we have and, and of course the parameters regarding this loan program this new loan program are much more flexible than our other programs but we do have other loan opportunities uh, through or commercial lending opportunities through the city of Columbia office of business opportunities that you can take advantage of so even though once these funds are exhausted um, and all the great uh, benefits that come with them um, are gone. We do have other opportunities that may not have the interest rate, uh, um, the better interest rate, but uh, our interest rates are still low um, and our terms are still uh, much easier to uh, handle than um, your traditional and non-traditional lenders. So there are other opportunities for you. Is there, Melissa, okay, is there a deadline? Oh, uh, yes, if, sir. If I and I posted in the chat, I failed to um, remember this earlier, but I sent the email to um, your team um, early today. Um, Upper Savannah Council of Government and the Catawba Council of Government, um, which um, serve multiple counties across the state, they have similar funds. Um, now, their structure is nowhere near the city of Columbia's um, in how they structured the loan, but they do uh, they did receive funds and have the same mission um, as the city of Columbia's. And so if you're outside of the city of Columbia, you know, if you go through that process and you see you're not within the city of Columbia and you can't apply, you know, reach out to myself or um, some of the other partners and we may be able to help you. Um, but I did post those flyers in the chat box um, at about 11, 20, 25 or so. That's great information. Again, we want to help. I know these funds are only for um, City of Columbia actual people or businesses located within the City of Columbia, but we certainly will post that listing um, out for everyone to have access to. So if you know the business owner in another area, you can certainly share that information with them. That's great information, Alan. Thank right. you. Yeah, and I'll and say if, if I was starting a business and I wasn't in the City of Columbia, I would move to the city of Columbia. Okay, so regarding that statement, <laughs> one one thing we cannot use the funds for um, is to deliberately. Uh, well, you can if you want to. If you've been planning on moving or locating your business within the city of Columbia, that's fine. But we definitely do not um, want you to just uh, relocate just because of the funds. Um, but you that's have like a, a strategic reason. That was my keyword, starting, starting, strategically starting. And you do your research and you have the proof that, you know, this is why you're moving your business here. Um, so, but yes, thank you, Alan. We appreciate you. <laughs> Any other questions at this time? Okay. But we certainly, the city of Columbia is a great place to start your business or expand your business, just to put that plug in there. Okay. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, the next couple of sections uh, relate to um, the. Uh, she took it down. Okay. The um, cover sheet or cover page or the loan documentation checklist. Um, and will go into the um, loan process. Um, the required, I, well, before I go any further, this document will spell out the, the things that have to be accompanying the, um, the loan application and documents. I ask that anyone that is submitting the application and documents do so with this as a cover sheet, followed by the application, followed by uh, the, the required documents. Um, and I'll ask that you present all of those together um, so that I get an entire package at one time to start the evaluation process. So uh, to go over the cover sheet, or the required documents. The first one, of course, is the loan application. 
We also ask that you provide us with a, a copy of your business license. That license has to be a City of Columbia uh, business license. The next document we will need is your proof of business insurance. I do not need the entire uh, uh, insurance policy. I simply need the declaration page within that set of documents. Uh, a copy of the uh, primary business owner's license, driver's license, or other government issued photo ID. And that would apply to anyone that is a primary owner on the business that's listed on the application. Um, the other uh, requirement is to produce a business plan or a business narrative, which um, Alan did a great job of spelling out uh, uh, that, the, that document. Uh, we will need two years of your most recent bank statements, personal and business, uh, a resume of the applicant. Uh, as uh, Alan alluded to earlier, we don't need uh, a resume of you know, 20 years ago. We just need to know how it relates to um, your ability to, to function in the business that you're, you're um, either acquiring or, or starting up or um, uh, what you've been doing within your current business. Uh, we need business cash flow projections for 12 months. Um, either your startup balance sheet, which is a business that hasn't actually started yet, or is just in the process of starting the business, or um, the projections for an existing business. Um, these documents, I just wanna let you know that these documents will be available to you on our website later on this afternoon. So you don't have to, you can use your own if you have them, um, but you can certainly use these documents uh, and produce those to us. If you're an existing uh, business, we will need your balance sheet and income statements for the past two years, fiscal years, uh, not less than 60 days old. Um, again, the template will be available to you on the, on the website. We also will need two years of your most recent tax returns, personal and business, uh, with all schedules and W-2s uh, for all flyers. Uh, and lastly, we will need a sign and dated personal financial statement. Again, I'll reiterate all of these documents will be available on our website for you to use uh, later this afternoon. Uh, next, I will be discussing the application. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we go back one more? One more. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that we highlight one thing um, in regards to the business license, the City of Columbia business license. We need a current, we need a current um, business license. So make sure you, if your business license has expired, I know that a number of people um, have not had a chance or were not able to actually review earlier when COVID first happened with the, the shutdown and everything. But make sure you get your current business license to us. Um, we do need a current business license. The business narrative uh, template is a required template if you choose to use the business narrative and not a business plan. Um, and the financial statements are the optional templates that you may use on our website that will be available this afternoon. So just re re to reiterate, the uh, current business license is needed. Um, also your business insurance declaration page, it should also be current. 
um, your driver's license. I should have to say this, but that should be current. <laughs> it should not be expired. Um, and if you choose to use the business plan, that's fine. But if you do not use a business plan, you must use the template, the business narrative template that's on our website. But the financial documents, and I want to thank the South Carolina Small Business Development Center, Alan Brown, for um, sharing those documents with us. So those are actually um, products of our Small Business Development Center, which is another reason that we have our partners at the table because they're familiar with these documents as well. And everyone that we are going to share with the, the resources and referrals that we're going to share with you, they can help you um, complete these documents as well. Thanks. Sorry, Brett. No, no, no. That's great. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to discuss with you guys is the flow chart, how the application process works with us. Uh, once you have produced the application with the cover sheet and the accompanying uh, documents, uh, once that package is received, uh, that's when we start the evaluation process. Uh, after the process of undergoing the, the evaluation, uh, I then uh, review the application package uh, with the evaluation that I've done with my OBO director, who you've heard from today, Melissa. Melissa then reviews the, the, the package. And at that point, uh, the application is then uh, presented to our CRLF uh, loan committee. Uh, now, let me say this, that if um, in the review process, we find that there are things that are not, um, uh, that, the, that the package lacks the, the, the required um, The required, um, um, uh, if there are things that are lacking um, in the, the package that is presented, we will, we will um, have resources, as Alan um, alluded to earlier, we will have outside help um, available to try to fill in the, the needed um, compliance uh, elements that, that will bring the package to where it needs to be. So it's not dead in the water. It's just something that needs some additional uh, work. Uh, we then present the, the loan package to the rec with a recommendation to the uh, CRF loan committee. They are ultimately the deciders of the yay or nay um, on the on the loan. Um, if they find at that point that there are things lacking, they may um, they may require conditions on the loan. Uh, they may say we need um, additional. This loan needs additional help with, um, I don't know, I'll just throw something out, with the financial structure or, or the numbers. Um, and we will help try to help uh, with, with outside sources like uh, a CPA or um, Alan and his guys or his folks and, and other resources with the uh, Small Business Development Center. Um, to help uh, individuals that need that additional. Uh, the conditions may be that we, the, the, the committee has the option of saying, okay, we will approve this loan for this amount of money. However, the applicant must uh, attend uh, some sort of uh, counseling counseling or, or, or 
seminars or something that we would produce um, to help them out uh, with so that the loan committee would feel better with okaying the, um, the package. If the loan, and in most cases, this happens, uh, the loan committee uh, approves our recommendation. Uh, what is then uh, produced is a commitment letter. Uh, that commitment letter is given to you. That's basically telling you you've been approved for the loan. You then uh, sign that commitment letter, get that back to us. Um, I, oh, I did over, I passed over one thing. When the loan is presented to the lo our loan committee, I go before the loan committee, I give them all the financial uh, background of the, of the package. Each applicant must appear in front of that loan committee. The applicant uh, will basically come to tell the story of the business. Um, they, you won't have to, um, you won't have to go over your financials because in many cases they want to talk finance language. And so I take that off of your plate. I'll discuss that with them. Um, and then you guys will say, well, this is my business because nobody knows your business better than you do. You will uh, discuss your business, how it's going, how it isn't going, how um, you plan on a new startup, you will tell them that, what your plans are, uh, and so forth. So you will present. Um, once that presentation is done, the loan committee uh, will um, decide on whether they approve it or not. Once that approval is done, as I said, the commitment letters uh, sent to you. At the, at the point that we sent or you have given us the commitment letter back, at that point, you all will choose your, uh, your own closing attorney and establish a closing date with that attorney. You will advise us of, of that, uh, that attorney and that closing date we will communicate so that we can set up the uh, date and time with the attorney. And we then have the best day of all for a loan process. That is the loan closing. And that's when you get your funding. Uh, the wires will be funded to the closing attorney. The closing attorney will cut a check. That check will be issued to you at that closing. Uh, as I discussed a little bit earlier, um, the conditional approval, this is something that is unique to this loan program. Um, because many of, as we've discussed, the variances in our guidelines where we're not looking at stringent uh, loan requirements in the, in the traditional sense, many of our loans will be approved outside the standard underwriting uh, guidelines. And uh, as I alluded to earlier, as a result of that, the loan may be contingent on training or counseling uh, before we do the closing and disbursement. And uh, if it's necessary, any required training or counseling will be provided by us at no cost. Okay, at this point, Brett, we wanna take some questions. Okay, sure. Um, and while, while we're looking at the questions, I just want Brett, Brett, great job with that, presenting that information. Um, in regards to the conditional approval, um, one, one thing that we did very uh, deliberately, um, as we stated throughout this presentation, is making sure that these funds are accessible to any everyone, especially those that may not have qualified for funding uh, over the past couple of months through other sources. Um, and, and by doing that, 
we have also looked at it as an opportunity to help strengthen our small business community and help our small businesses, you know, build their infrastructure. So after COVID or during, you know, COVID, because it's going to be with us for a while, you're going to be able to be stronger as a result of getting the funds, but also it will be about sustainability um, after COVID has gone. So we're looking at this as an opportunity to build the capacity and strengthen our small business community, especially those small businesses that in the past have traditionally been traditionally, excuse me, been left out of the process. So again, we're going to work with everyone as much as we can to get you ready. If you're not already ready, um, to access these funds and hopefully there will be other opportunities in the future. Um, there's a lot of money right now coming down the pipeline from both the federal and state level to help um, our small business community. We'll be able to direct you if we don't have those funds directly. Hopefully we can direct you to those that do have the funds so that you can take advantage of those funds as well. So I just wanted to reiterate that and not make, make sure that doesn't share, you know, steer anyone off. The conditional approval doesn't mean that you won't get the money. It's just that we want to help you strengthen your business model um, as a result of this funding, so that you are successful. I do want Thanks. to say back over to you, Aisha. I want to go, go into this one last statement before we go into the um, questions, uh, before we uh, finish. I just want to, again, thank our partners. Um, they're invaluable. Um, the As Melissa discussed earlier, the Small Business Development Center one of the things, as, as, as a loan uh, officer, I have to do the evaluations. Um, so I can't produce what they give to me. I can't evaluate my own stuff, basically. But the work that Alan does, the work that the folks over there at the Benedict College Women's Center, the Small Business Minority Center, uh, interacting with James uh, Clive, uh, Chatfield over there at the Community Loan Fund. They're, they're, these folks um, make my life and, and job a lot easier. Uh, one other um, shout out that I'd like to give is all of this stuff seems, you know, like it just rained down from heaven that, you know, the EDA just looked at us and said, well, they did invite us to, to participate in this, 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 this funding. But I'd like to give a great thanks to our director because the amount of information that she had to produce for this thing is, I mean, each time they were like, well, we invite you for, for the lending but we need this and we need that and we need this and we need that. And she produced all of it. Um, and she basically made this happen for us. Um, all of my, my, my coworkers are, I mean, I can count on them day and night uh, without, without any hesitation. Aisha, I call Aisha the um, chief of staff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because in, uh, in Melissa's absence, Aisha gets on the horn and says, look, this is what we need to do, blah, blah, blah. And I, I thank you much for everything you've done with, with this program. And I've taken up enough time. Let's move thank on. You. Thank, thank you, you, Brett. But I, I want to reiterate this, this whole effort has been a collective effort, not only across our whole OBO team, everyone has pulled their weight in helping us do this and played a role but also our partners. They've been there with us from the beginning. That is a requirement of our EDA funds that we include our community partners, specifically those that are used to handling and working with loan recipients and making sure they're prepared for the process. Uh, we wanted to give them a chance, and so we're gonna answer the questions in the chat box at the end, but we wanted to go through and give everyone just a chance, our partners to talk about what they do um, and who they are. Um, only, can I give you all like two minutes? Um, so we can make sure everybody has a chance to hear the answers to the questions too. Let's start with Alan. You've heard from Alan. Alan is amazing. Um, he works very closely with us, as you can tell. And um, he gives us a lot of insight and he helps us make sure that we are in tune with the needs of the community. Um, Alan? 
Thank you, Melissa. Um, so I just want to reiterate something that Brett said that um, he mentioned um, that they got about two point seven, two point nine million dollars. Um, Melissa said that you know, last time that they received funds was about 20 years ago. Right now, these funds are revolving loan funds. So if I'm not mistaken, Melissa, that means that they'll stay in the community. That is right? correct. Right. So and we just increased the pool of our um, assets, right, our capital um, for our community by two point seven million dollars. And so we want I personally correct. congratulate, you know, OBO and, and thank you. Right. Because you've given me an opportunity to get some money on the street. <laughs> Right, to get into hands of business owners where it needs to be. Right. So I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. You know, um, I'm just going to say, you know, um, you guys can read the slide. You know, I'm with the SBDC. We've been around um, the state for 41 years. You know, one of the pilot SBDCs when the program first started 41 years ago, we have four regions, um, USC, Clemson, South Carolina State and Winthrop. Um, and um, you see the numbers that we had um, in 2018. Um, as it relates to capital, right, um, we helped attain $56 million in capital. That means, you know, programs like this, we help small business get $56 million, right? So we understand what entities like Brett's and traditional lenders are looking for as it relates to loan packages. And, and we know how to make your package presentable um, to the loan officer to get a yes, right? You know, um, it won't come from my office if I don't think it's going to get a yes. If, if, if it's not going to get a yes, then we're not sending it because we got some more work to do, right? You know, I will say as it relates to the SBDC locally, which is the Columbia area or the Midlands area, a lot of people don't know that um, we work, um, we have a, off a, a satellite office in Lexington, and we have a full office in Newberry and something in addition to um, the Columbia offices. And so if you or a friend has um, someone in those communities that you know that's interested in starting a business, business give us a call. Um, my information, I believe, was put in the chat. Or I think the next slide, um, Aisha has my information on it. And it will be available um, during the presentation. So give us a call. We look forward to helping you. Um, and Happy hunting. <laughs> okay, we will now hear from Miss Tangi Beatty. If you can unmute her phone, please. Tangi is with the Women's uh, Business Center, brand new Women's Business Center at Benedict College. Hello, everyone. Um, just wanted to um, say very quickly, I'm so excited about this opportunity um, that the city is presenting for small businesses. Um, I am Tangie Beatty. I am the program coordinator for the Benedict College Women's Business Center. And I'm here on behalf of my boss, who is the amazing Cheryl Valley. Um, she is the director. And so the Women's Business Center is a great um, place for small businesses to kind of come in and get one-on-one -on -one counseling. We help with business plans and financial projections so that you can go ahead and qualify for a lot of these loans um, that are out here. And so um, we are here, we are a free program. You are assigned a counselor that will walk you through the whole process, which is unique um, in the sense of really helping you um, develop your plan and develop your ways on how you want to achieve your goal so that you can present your package and get the money so that your business can grow and, and, uh, and succeed. So we are here. Um, you can go online and to our website, which is bcwbc.org and um, sign up in our e-center and then you will go through the process of um, getting oriented and then getting assigned a, a, a counselor. So definitely give us a call. We are here to help um, and help you obtain access to funding. So that's about it. Thank you, Tangie. Okay, and next we have Ms. Camille Shaw with the Minority Business Development Agency. Thank you, Camille. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to introduce our center to um, the businesses that are on the call. Um, again, I am Camille Shaw and I serve as the project director for the South Carolina Minority Business Development Center. 
We are funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce, Minority Business Development Agency, and we're operated by Dita Inc., um, owner Diane Sumter. And what we do is we're a part of a nationwide network that provides business, strategic business planning and consulting services to minority-owned businesses. And what we do is provide businesses with greater access to capital, contracts, and markets. Um, so if you are a minority-owned business needing support, um, let us know. Um, last year, we assisted our clients with procuring over $33 million in contracts and over $13 million in financing. So in today's changing climate, um, we know that it's a challenge for all minority businesses and that you all need um, advisors. And so we're here to help you grow. We're here to help you sustain your business um, and to meet those challenges in today's environment. So please contact us if you have um, any questions. We work with existing and established and seasoned businesses to put you on a plan and a track for future growth and development. So please contact us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Camille. And please give Ms. Sumter our, our hello, our hellos. Um, next, we have the South Carolina Community Loan Fund with Mr. James Chatfield. Thank you. Is he on the phone, Carla? Okay, he's not, he's not responding. Um, the South Carolina Community Loan Fund, they're not only a funder, they also provide, I'll speak on his behalf, I'll try anyway. They also provide technical assistance and um, direct one-on-one -on -one counseling to um, potential business owners or current business owners. So his, their information's there and they're also a great, great partner in all that we do. Next slide. You can um, take questions now. Okay. I wanted to also say Brett's information was up there. That was the last slide. Um, and we'll, we're gonna send out the actual presentation to everyone so that you have it. Um, wanted to, Brett, just to go some of the, the loan products, other loan products that we have. I know, thank you. Um, Brett has done a great job with working with our loan applicants, also our recipients. Um, he's amazing. He will go above and beyond for anyone, as especially our, our customers. So I wanted to give Brett just a chance to talk about our different loan funds that we have um, available. And then we'll take questions. And there are a number of questions in the chat box we probably need to respond to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, we basically have um, three other loan pools. Um, as, as we've alluded to earlier, we had an initial, which we had since 20 years ago, um, another EDA uh, loan pool um, where we have funding uh, from uh, that available from that pool. We also have um, SURF funds. SURF are uh, city uh, funds that have been uh, granted to us by the city city of Columbia government. Uh, that fund gave us at that time the greatest latitude of all with discretionary uh, things um, within our lending program. Uh, many of those latitudes that we are now using in this new EDA program uh, were available to us under those SURF dollars because they were non-federal government dollars. The last pool of money that we have is a, a grant that was given to us uh, from CDBG, uh, which is Community Development Block Grant. Uh, those funds are also federal dollars. 
Um, so many of the things that are requirements of the EDA program, the I's have to be dotted and the T's have to be crossed um, in order to be in compliance with, uh, with those government funds. Uh, in addition to that, uh, us, we have a, what was formerly called a uh, facade program. Uh, that is now our community retention and redevelopment program. That, those funds are available for upgrades on existing businesses uh, within a specified corridor or corridors uh, that uh, we, we work um, during a given period of time, which is something that is approved by our uh, city council um, and, and targeted as a need for, for uh, upgrading. Did I miss okay. something, Melissa? Thank you, Brad. No, I think you did a great job. I will say with the RR funds that he mentioned it, um, towards the end, um, we have received that's a very popular program. And right now, because of budget uh, constraints due to COVID, um, we have not received any additional funding to do any more projects uh, for the remainder of this fiscal year. Um, we're hoping that we will look revisit it uh, for next next fiscal year to see if we will have some funds available. But just so no one expects those dollars to be readily available because right now we don't have them. Um, but that's a very, very popular program. It's one where we can actually see the tangible results of, of our work. Um, but hopefully we'll get some more funds in to, to start that process. Thank you, Brett. Um, Aisha, can you start with some of the questions um, that they have for Brett? Okay. Um... Time frame to anticipate completion of this process of approvals. We anticipate the uh, maximum time um, for the application process not to exceed 30 days. Um, and what happens is, as I alluded to earlier, uh, it all depends on the cycle of the full application package being presented. Um, and then we have to go before our loan um, commercial loan committee. So if we get the package the day before the loan committee meets, uh, certainly we it would it would extend the, the period of time. So we speak about a thirty day period because to, it should that should cover any period of time that the package is presented. Uh, we should be able to get it through the, the loan process. Okay. For the startup information, do you need my personal taxes since there has been no activity for taxes on the business? Right. And is homeowners insurance sufficient if it's a home base at the moment? No. Um, we would need, well, if it's a startup, then you would you would have to obtain business insurance on the business, the, the new business. Uh, because if something went wrong with the business, you can't have uh, homeowners uh, insurance to cover the business. So it has to be a separate policy. Okay. Um, if you are renting, would the renter's insurance suffice for business insurance? No. Now again, the business has to be covered by business insurance um, because the business is a separate entity from your personal coverage. A couple of people just asked about startup information. Maybe um, would this be eligible if you're a startup? With this Absolutely. Money? Yeah. All startups will be considered. Um, we actually have a document in our documents, which we will be releasing um, later on today, uh, where you would give us the financial. You will have to do your your um, your uh, narrative, uh, but you would do it as a startup. And then, in terms of your financial documents, you will need your personal. Um, tax information, um, 
you will need to present uh, the insurance as we just talked about for the business. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have to obtain that, that business license. Um, but there's a separate document uh, that's dedicated in terms of the financials for startups because you're not looking at historical, there is none. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be looking at uh, three year projections on the business. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll just fill that document out and put in your, your projections of, of what you will be making over the next three years. Um, again, if that is something that you can't quite figure out, please reach out to one of our, um, our partners and they can, they can um, assist you in uh, where, to, where to put the numbers. Brett, can I say something regarding that? Sure. You know, like Melissa said, in relationship to this process, right, um, we intentionally wanted to streamline what is sometimes a three to six month process yeah. um, to about six weeks, mm -hmm. you know, from the time you contact us to the time you get funded. That's what our goal is, right? But that is also going to be contingent upon how serious you take the documents that we um, provided for you and complete them um, in a timely uh, and efficient manner, right? And so, you know, if there's a if there's something on one of those documents that you don't understand, you need to reach out to us as quickly as possible so that you can get clarity. Uh, um, because, you know, as we are, as they, you know, get applications, the ones that are complete are the ones that are going to go to the top of the pile, right? The ones that they don't have questions about. Now, Brett can't say this, right? Because he worked for the city, but I can because I don't work for the city, <laughs> right? The one, the ones that go, right, that are incomplete, right, are, go, are going to get set aside. They're going to have to send you an email and say, look, we need some additional information, right? But if your documents are complete when they receive them, the process that Brett and the, and Melissa and his team just presented um, will go smooth, right? And that and and those steps that um, they presented will work in your favor, as opposed to being a hindrance to you getting the money that's available for you, right? So so um, he's not going to say this to you, right? Um, but I will, right? Take some time initially to review the documents if you have some questions reach out reach out to him and 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 they'll direct you where you need to go right we want to get this money in your hands um, those the process was intended to get it into your hands quickly as opposed to the traditional loan process right and so i, I i'll give you a reference point so those of you who um, may be familiar with the cares act disaster loan funding that was done through the sba right that is a reference point as it relates to the advance and the EIDL portion that you can think of of what the intent was. The intent was to get money into your hands quickly to be able to, to um, provide a, a, a capital injection for your business so you could sustain your business. That's the purpose of these funds, to get money into your hands quickly, but meet the compliance requirements that EDA has. Right. And so um, those documents that you that you have or you're going to take a look at, you know, are somewhat comprehensive and self um, revealing. Right. Because um, we, we include in those documents some of the decision points that we need to that we need to have in order to get you across the line. Right. And so there is global debt service coverage. There's a debt service coverage in there. Right. Um, a lot of you don't know. Or I'm familiar with those terms, but those are the t things that we use to make decisions. Right, loan officers used to make decisions. So I just want to say, take some time, get familiar with the documents. You know, reach out um, if you establish business. Right, as Camille said, you know, you can call them. Um, they work with established businesses, but if you're a startup, don't call them because they they can't help you. Right, but if you establish, that's not a part of their mission. Right, but if you're a, a startup and um, you need some assistance, WBC, SB, SBDC. Right. Um, we'll walk you through those documents um, and, and we'll help you get across the finish line. OK, a couple other questions real quick. Is there a minimum maximum for business insurance? Minimum, uh, 
No, there are, it, it will largely depend on the type of business and the insurance company will tell you what the minimum coverages are for certain parameters within that business. So there's no minimum to us, but there's a minimum coverage that the, the insurance company will allow under certain uh, parameters of the, of the business. If you okay. own a restaurant, there'll be certain minimum requirements that you have to have for that coverage. Okay. Does that make sense? So um, Sheila asked, would an insurance quote be sufficient if the lease for an office has not been signed yet? If you just have a quote at this point. A quote? It would. You have to have an active policy. So. And, and that's. Have, go ahead. We, have, we, have, we need proof of insurance that the, comp the business is insured. So um, I I would wait until you get get the actual coverage. Present that because the quote won't say you have the coverage. Yeah. Okay. And then Alex. Oh, Melissa. Melissa. I, I just wanted to say too, um, if you're in the middle of, or if you need the loan in order to actually start that lease or execute that lease. That may be something that we have to look at on a case by case basis, where it may be conditional approval may be granted until the actual um, lease is signed and you have your business insurance at that point. So we're going to need that proof before we actually close on the loan. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, last, Alex says, as a small trucking company located within the city of Columbia. Um, based off his physical address, and he's looking to expand the scope of operation to freight brokerage, would he be eligible to use funds for training in this capacity? The business is located in Columbia, and he would like to do training with the dollars? He wants to expand his scope of operation to freight brokerage, so um, it looks like he'll need training to expand the business into freight brokerage. Yeah, that sounds like, yeah. Yeah, he's just expanding the business. He can use funding for expansion, yes. And that, that might require a one-on-one -on -one conversation to, to kind of get the details. Of yeah, what yeah, but by what you presented. Yeah. Um, I just want to remind everybody, if you look on the chat bar, there's three dots, and that'll give you the ability to save the chat. If you want to um, keep track of some of the answers that were provided in the chat, and then we'll also create a frequently asked question um, based off those questions on there. Melissa? I think all the questions have been answered. Uh, great job, everyone. Um, for the questions, excellent, excellent questions. We will be sharing a copy of the presentation with everyone this afternoon. Um, along with a listing of our available, uh, other available loans that were mentioned by, by Brett today and the other documents referenced uh, this afternoon that Alan shared with you earlier, as well as the different components, our checklist or the application itself, the uses of the funds as, um, as well as the, the actual ordinance that was passed by um, council uh, on the 15th that you have an, a better understanding and you have that information in front of you when you're actually putting your application together. So you'll know the intent of these funds and you can um, incorporate that intent into your, your narrative. Um, we're excited about this process. Um, we're excited about you starting or expanding or, you know, enhancing your business right now. Um, keep in mind, uh, I saw some questions in here uh, directly. It may, may have been people that joined later, but these funds can be used for their traditional uh, uses that we have, uh, acquiring property, um, operating capital, um, working capital, capital. Um, but they can also be used to purchase PPE equipment um, for employee testing, um, to make the necessary renovations to your establishment to comply with uh, ED, not EDA, but CDC uh, standards um, 
So it's very open, it's very flexible, but as Alan mentioned, we're trying to get money in your hands as possible. The application, the easier it will be to, you know, walk your application through. And Alan, we will tell, we will put it aside and move to the next one if it's not complete until we actually get all the information that we um, have in. So we, we, we will say that. Um, the, the, the biggest thing is making sure that you're committed to this process. And now is really a time for you to look within your business to see what gaps are there so that you can use this money in the most effective and efficient way possible to sustain your business for the long run. Um, it's not meant to be a quick fix. It's meant to help you strengthen your business so that you can withstand the economic injury caused by COVID-19. Um, again, thank you to our partners. Thank you to uh, the Columbia PR department for all that you do. And thank you, our small business community, for all that you do in making the city of Columbia such a great place to live and work and play. Thank you. Hey, thank you, guys. This is Alex Brown. I just want to thank you guys for um, doing such a phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Are there any more questions? Um, you can unmute yourselves and ask those questions before we leave. Um, we definitely want to answer as many questions as possible that you may have. And if necessary, just call us. I'm, I'm going to give the number out in case you want to reach us. I'm going to put it in the chat box um, and we will direct your call to the appropriate person. All of our lines, even though we're not, we're working remotely, our phone um, lines, our desk lines have been transferred to our phone. So we will get your messages. Thank, thank you guys for all that you do. Again, we can't we can't do what we do without our small businesses. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question is it's related to the business license and location. Uh, we have our principal office, which is the administrative side of the business, that's located in the city of Columbia and have been for um, about. 13 years and then we have a newer physical location that is located in the forest acres area um, but the biggest thing is we would like to do the expansion in um, uh, in one of the city of Columbia areas um, and I don't really want to give away the location um, quite yet um, but we, we would like to do the expansion there. So without having any kind of contractual agreement um, processing, um, can we still utilize the main principal office that we're already in um, with the city of Columbia? Do, do you have a business license in the city of Columbia uh, with the existing business that you have in Columbia? Yes, sir. We just um, basically because of expenses wise over the years um, and not being able to actually name COVID, but most of our businesses within healthcare. So we were actually seeing um, issues related to ICD coding changes and things of that nature, like other healthcare facilities. And so we started downsizing a lot. And so by doing so, what's quoted as remote and work, um, excuse me, working remotely. Um, we relocated the office um, to work remotely from the actual um, business um, because of space and being able to afford um, actual office space. Um, we always would hope to expand to have both in one location, um, but at this time, just so we could have enough buffer for emergency reasons like COVID, um, we we're able to actually survive. And so with that being said, um, we do utilize that we just don't actual uh, we don't offer our services there we offer um, our products at that location okay. um, and we co do contractual um, agreements and meetings at that location one-on-one -on -one so meetings your your business you have your business for any purpose that it's, it's in two locations yes sir okay but we don't so one services. of those locations one of those locations is in columbia proper mm -hmm. correct correct and yes, so you could apply for this funding 
under that location of your business. Okay, because I think when we originally applied, we put both locations, um, mostly because I really just didn't want to get denied. But, <laughs> um, you know, so I understand now. And I thank you so much, everyone, for your time, um, because this did provide some clarity for me sure. um, on a lot of um, concerns that I had. And so I'll be looking forward to the um, information that you guys release later. Sure. And, and, and in addition to what we've uh, discussed broadly here, feel free to pick up the phone and give me a call at any time and I'd be happy to discuss it further with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more questions before we wrap it up? All right. And again, Aisha, let's go ahead and send out the documents to everybody that registered. So all the loan documents to everyone um, so that they have it if we can today. Um, so people can start working on these items. And we're gonna also upload the financial templates provided to us by SBDC this afternoon. Um, so you can start looking at those documents and making contact with everyone. We will send out the presentation to you so you'll have the contact information for the um, community partners reference here that can help you again. MBDA, the Minority Business Advisory, Minority Business Development Agency, they deal with existing um, and expanding businesses only. If you're a startup or if you're you know, a new business, a woman-owned business, and you still need um, uh, some assistance, SBDC can handle anyone, as well as the Women's Business Center at Benedict College. Um, South Carolina Community Loan Fund, they will also help you in any way they can, other than with funding. They also have technical assistance that they can provide to you as well. And we're always here to be a resource for you as well. And if you don't have the answer, we'll find it for you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you so much. Even you, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Melissa. Hey, I will <laughs> say, give a plug for James Crew over at South Carolina Community Loan Fund. Yeah. Um, they do work with startups, right? So if you're a startup and you need funding, right, that's a great resource and, and we leverage their capital all the time. So um, I know some people have some problems with startups. So, you know, even, even, even I knew that. All right, we're signing off. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day, everybody. We put, I had a fun time. I had a good time. We put our office number in the chat box. Save the chat if you would like, um, and it'll, you'll have it there to refer back to. We'll get the frequently frequently asked questions and answers to you um, this afternoon as well. Um, but thank you. And our phone number's on there as well as our email address if you want to send us some other questions um, directly if you come up with some later. Thank you again. Thank you so much, community partners, um, Alan, Camille, Tanji, and Brett. Thank you for all that you do as well. Bye-bye. And Aisha, great job, man, keeping us straight and organized as always. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. <laughs> great information. Great information. Thanks, Aisha. Okay.